you want to see the design, we ha it's hard to see the red, but the red goes from ages like 7 to 20. We followed up the youngest cohort, and we followed the oldest cohort from like age 12 or 13 to 25. The middle cohort we had to stop funding due to, uh, stop following due to funding restraints, but somebody just picked them up in their 20s, and that should be an interesting study. So we're continuing, actually there's a grant in, pending right now to follow up these boys five years later. And so with this data, first I looked at the developmental associations in two different papers, one looking at the youngest cohort and one looking at the oldest cohort. And I basically found that the associations between substance use and violence were reciprocal over time. That meant that alcohol or marijuana use in one year predicted aggression or violent offending in the next year, even controlling for violent offending in this year. But similarly, violent offending in one year predicted alcohol and drug use in the next year. I found that in the younger cohort, the relationship was stronger for marijuana and violence, and in the older cohort, it was stronger for alcohol and violence. And it seemed to reflect historical differences in popularity of drugs at various times um, during the 90s. We also found in the youngest cohort, when we controlled for common risk factors, specifically race and hard drug use, the association between marijuana and violence uh, was no longer significant, which indicated that marijuana use and violence are probably related because they share a similar set of common causes. But what's really exciting for me is that the PYS data let me look at the acute associations between all different kinds of crime and all kinds of drug use. And what made this special is because previous studies that have looked at the acute effects have used predominantly uh, samples of adjudicated um, adolescents or uh, people in jail. And these findings have not been generalizable to uh, community samples. And in fact, it's been speculated that some kids may lie about their alcohol or drug involvement when they commit crimes to hopefully give themselves an excuse or um, for committing the crime. Or it's even possible that those who can use drugs are the ones more likely to get caught. So we weren't sure how to interpret these data from adjudicated delinquents. So the best way to study this, I felt, was to look in community samples. But the problem with community samples is, as I alluded to before, you often have very low rates of crime, so it's difficult to do these studies. But luckily, in the Pittsburgh sample, we had a nice uh, variability in crime rates. And also, most of the studies have only looked at a few types of crime and have not controlled for drug use. Obviously, if you don't control for drug use, you can't look at drug-related uh, violence. So I was able to do all that. And finally, nobody had really attempted to explain the mechanisms or why there is this association between drug use and violence. So um, I tried to look at three different possible mechanisms. The first would be the psychopharmacological effects of drugs that I alluded to before. That is that impairment, specifically from alcohol, would lower inhibitions or um, increase the risks for kids acting violently because of uh, lack of awareness of, of risks, lack of concern about consequences, and all of those things. Another possibility is that delinquency or offending is a peer group activity, and so is drug use. And it might be that um, kids sort of get together with their friends and they get high together and then they sort of motivate each other to commit crimes. And the third possible mechanism might be individual differences. That, me, that being that individuals who may be high on certain temperament characteristics, for example impulsivity, might be more likely to commit crimes um, or at least violent crimes under the influence. So I basically at, we asked five questions in this study. Is there a difference in the types of crimes that are committed under the influence of alcohol and drugs? Is there a difference between alcohol and marijuana use in whether kids commit crimes under the influence of drugs? Is there a relationship between committing crimes with other people and committing crimes under the influence? What is the effect of drug involvement on committing crimes under the influence? And finally, are these relationships moderated by individual impulsivity or peer delinquency? 
We had a whole, we had 19 different uh, types of offenses that the kids self-reported on, and I divided them into general theft, crimes against persons, and then miscellaneous crimes. And we also had, in order to assess committing crimes under the influence, we asked kids, for each crime they committed, we asked them, when you committed your most serious offense, uh, were you under the influence of alcohol or drugs? Now, that was a problem for me because it was alcohol or drugs, and I couldn't separate the two uh, types of substances. But there were two questions in the data set that asked about getting into fights and getting in trouble with the police while using alcohol and while using marijuana, and these were asked separately for users of alcohol and <coughs> users of marijuana. Also, the, the question that asked about committing crimes under the influence asked the, them, when you committed the most serious crime, did you commit it with other people or did you commit it alone? So we were able to see which crimes were committed with other people. And we also measured drug use, impulsivity, and peer delinquency. This slide shows you the percent of boys committing each different type of offense under the influence of alcohol and drugs. Now keep in mind that this slide is based on the number who commit the crime, which could be as little as 14 subjects for forging checks to as many as 220 boys for strong arming. And actually what you see here is strong arming is the, the uh, drug, uh, the offense committed most often under the influence of alcohol and drugs. About 44% uh, of the boys committed their most serious strong arming offense under the influence of alcohol and drugs. And if you look at the highest ones, you see they are strong arming, um, attacking people, throwing things at people. Um, I can't see them all from here. But all of the ones that have the highest rates of being under the influence are also the ones that we consider to be aggressive delinquency. If you look on the right side of the slide, you see the, uh, that nobody forged a check under the influence. And in fact, the lowest levels of committing crimes under the influence were the white collar crimes. Just to summarize that, this slide presents a summary of it, dividing those into crimes against persons and theft. And what you see here, first of all, in green, it's the ever. So you see 61% of the sample ever committed a person crime, and 32% ever committed a theft crime. So actually, twice as many kids in this sample committed violent offenses than committed property offenses. But of those who commit each of those crimes, 40% committed a violent crime under the influence of alcohol and drugs, where only 23% committed a theft crime. Again, show, supporting, in answer to our first question, violent crimes are more often pr committed under the influence of alcohol and drugs than are property crimes. But this didn't tell me whether, you know, it was alcohol or drugs. So we looked at the fighting and getting in trouble with the police separately for alcohol and drugs, uh, alcohol and marijuana. And what you see here is that 23% of the alcohol users committed a, uh, got into fights while they were drinking, whereas only 6% of the marijuana users got into fights while they were drinking. Again, 18% got in trouble with the police while they were drinking, and only 10% while they were using marijuana. So what you see here is that kids are more likely to, to get into fights while drinking than they are when they are smoking marijuana.